Um, so hi everyone. Uh, I just wanted to take a look here at Japan. Um, I kind of flipped the world on an edge here, uh, just to kind of be uh, interesting and uh, think about this from one perspective. So this is basically the Pacific Ocean. On the other side of the Pacific Ocean is uh, either South America or America. Um, but the end of all Eastern civilization really is uh, Japan here or a little tip of Russia. Um, but uh, in terms of a lot of things, uh, Japan is extremely important. Um, and also, uh, I often joke with a lot of my friends, I'm like, hey, man, Japan is cooler than California. And uh, in some ways, about the same size, too. Um, just a lot of really uh, cool, interesting areas here in Japan. Now, you can see uh, this is uh, kind of another part of Asia, um, mainly the Philippines and Indonesia and all this. Um, and that's also very awesome. And I'm working on a, for many months, I've been working on a study about this, but we're going to kind of focus on Japan here. Um, and just some quick little facts about Japan uh, that may surprise you. So in terms of the largest economies in the world, uh, you know, United States and China are the biggest two, uh, with perhaps uh, China being the largest um, by some measures, uh, but uh, uh, but actually Japan is uh, considered widely considered the third largest. Uh, let me just transition to the graph here so you can kind of see. So basically, United States uh, by total wealth, and then China, and then Japan here. So obviously, something's going on in Japan uh, that we need to study. Uh, and uh, so that's kind of the economics here of Japan. Um, and uh, we're going to go through as much as we can today about Japan. Um, so perhaps the more traditional view of Japan is this one. Um, and this is kind of at the top here of Asia. So there's kind of this uh, uh, diamond shaped here in the ocean. But uh, basically you got Taiwan. Uh, most of the people in the world live here in China and also in this valley in India. Um, but uh, Japan is kind of a curious country because uh, it's up here in the north, northern part, um, kind of uh, away from the rest of uh, most of Asia. Uh, so, you know, you might say the center of Asia is kind of this Indochina area um, and then all these other islands. So and it's actually kind of a cohesive bunch of island. It's basically an island here, uh, a little bit different than the uh, Philippines and the rest of the area. Um, but you can kind of start to see uh, basically the details here about Japan. Uh, so if you look at the total wealth on in Japan, you can see they're right here. Um, they're kind of uh, in this uh, group. So here's uh, you know United States and, and China, uh, and then uh, this is in trillions, uh, and uh, that's the size I think per year of their economy, right? So. Basically, you kind of have these other Europeans uh, and then even India here. Um, so basically, uh, even on a, another level than a lot of countries, and some of these countries have a lot more land mass than uh, Japan, certainly. Um, but so basically, one of the reasons is that uh, as you look at this, uh, Japan is just a really kind of shaped like California in some ways, kind of the opposite, going the opposite direction. Um, but... Uh, uh, kind of a uh, interesting uh, country here. So, uh, if I what I want to do is add a couple things to this map, so you can kind of start to see what's going on. Uh, so, for me personally, I really like this climate classification map. Um, it just really helps me understand a lot about similar areas uh, in terms of the climate. So, you know, if you're going to travel to some place and uh, you travel to another place. Um, in a similar area, you basically know that the climate is going to be similar. So this is climate map, um, and then there's a population map. So this one kind of wasn't good enough for me. The, this area, I kind of dimmed it a little bit. But if I add the uh, street light map on top of that, you start to see in detail where people are really living. So these white areas, it just doesn't give you enough resolution, unfortunately, on this um, map. Uh, but uh, and it took a while to get this all going, but uh, but basically you can add this all to Google Earth. You can look up geo tiffs, or you can just look up uh, these names here. Um, but uh, basically that gives you an idea. So 
uh, what you saw up here was Tokyo, um, and then the other major city in Japan, Osaka down here, kind of southern Japan. So there's definitely a difference between northern Japan and southern Japan. Um, can kind of tell that with the climate. It gets pretty cold up here in uh, north, far north Japan. Um, and there's some mountainous areas here. And then there's basically southern Japan here. Um, but uh, that's at least from a climate perspective. Uh, so this is primarily a discussion on the economics in Japan. And uh, I like this to get started. Just kind of seeing, so you can see the economy is heavily dependent on vehicles. So as we, I'm going to try to go through all the top companies in Japan here. But uh, basically it's heavily dependent on uh, simply, essentially shipping, right? Making ships uh, and vehicles. So uh, you'll see that uh, the car companies are the biggest. So, and then there's uh, industrial machinery. Um, and it's really kind of surprising. A lot of uh, big machines are made there. Uh, and then they have a pretty sizable iron industry, plastics, and electronics. So the surprising thing is actually there's not a huge amount of electronics, proportionally speaking, to say, for example, South Korea. And quite a lot of tourism, right? So that's a good 15% or so of the economy. Um, this is on their money that they make. So imports is a little different. I'll just do this quickly here so you can see, but you can see that importing a lot of energy here they have unspecified and a lot of food so that's kind of a shocker um but uh uh but anyway so this is their export map um i hope not their import map so here's their export map um and here you are with uh japan and interestingly they export a lot to south korea and india but they actually export more to india than they do to China, right? And uh, you can even see uh, Japan is working pretty heavily here with Europe, Turkey, even a little pockets in uh, Africa, and of course the United States. So uh, this is really detailed and you'd have to study it carefully. Um, obviously Taiwan and South Korea may be a first step to really understand. You can click on this and see the total 22 billion for South Korea and about... 20 billion for uh, Taiwan. So similarly, and then if you want to compare it with India, you can see about 6 billion and uh, so on. And then United States with 70 billion. So uh, kind of giving you a relative size of what's going on with their exports. Um, I love this map, but it looks really bad for Japan in general. So in general, uh, in the 19... Around 1990s, 90s, uh, Japan was a way different country in terms of total. Uh, they were really a powerhouse back then, and they've kind of been going down. But in general, you can see here, uh, if you go to the tree map back on this, you can see the cars and all that. This uh, kind of purple color is that, and then the machinery is light blue. But if you look at this, so it's cars and machinery on the top too there. Um, and you can see these little blips, uh, certainly um cars is still a big part of their economy and over time you can kind of see here um just as a segment so vehicles for a long time have been um, but a lot of this vehicle changes started around 2001 um in terms of uh big changes here for their economy in in uh and you can kind of see their total um exports here so and on the import side you can kind of see what's been going on so yeah really dependent on minerals here which doesn't look too good and pretty heavy on agriculture and uh even though you might have sushi uh just about anywhere in the world but anyway it gives you a basic idea so we'll just go back to this uh export map and i think that kind of gives you an overall perspective of what's going on in japan and i'll just switch back to the other map so again uh so we saw a lot of exports here going over to south korea uh, perhaps through Busan uh, down in the south here or maybe even all the way around and then you might even ship down through here and head up into uh, Beijing right but there actually was surprisingly more there's a lot more shipping going on to South Korea than there is to China for some reason um, and uh, then even more ship a lot of shipping coming in through here to uh, uh, Thailand right uh, and then maybe even all the way around here past Singapore and over to India 
or even up to here to Mumbai. So that's that. But actually, most of the shipping goes straight across here over to the United States of America, probably to Los Angeles, Port of Los Angeles, um, and uh, this kind of thing. So, uh, but basically, that's kind of a quick intro to everything here in Japan uh, in terms of uh, exports. Uh, so I found this particularly curious. Uh, we saw some data earlier that showed around uh, 1990s there was some problems. But you can see just a huge, huge changes in Japan from the 1960s all the way to 1995. Uh, just wow, right? Going from a, you know, billion dollar economy to a almost 43 trillion dollar think that it no no okay, well whoa, whoa, this is not okay yeah this is per capita right so this is uh sorry this is a five hundred dollars per year um that you're making up to forty three thousand so and that's over maybe two or three generations or whatever right and but still man can you imagine going from a uh, less than a thousand dollars a year uh, to uh, up to uh, forty three thousand dollars a year, so that's like forty three times difference. Um, and then staying relatively flat, and even dropping here, right? So, uh, but you can kind of see Japan's maybe making quite a little, pretty positive changes in recent years. Um, uh, but certainly, this twenty twelve mark was a high point for Japan, um, and uh, something happened right around there. So. Just interesting to see. I got a couple quick other maps here to look at. So this is the Nikkei. You can look it up. N-I-K-K-E-I. It's their uh, stock market. I think it's something like they call it the 225. So it's maybe the 225 largest. Um, and then also on the bottom here, I put uh, kind of the uh, uh, a chart just to do a oscillator. So it's just price oscillator. I should probably change this to... Uh, six and oh sorry six and twelve so this will oscillate it's a comparison of two averages over six months and over 12 months so you can kind of see these relatively peak points uh, in their economy even though it looks like it was down but actually it was up for the last six months so there's these little point marks that are interesting to look at and we can probably do the same thing here um this also has an oscillator this is the dollar versus the yen and you can see it's about 100 to 1 which it's changed quite a lot right so kind of down to 80 here and uh, kind of losing some value and then kind of gaining value ever since about 2015 and if you look back on this gdp per capita so they kind of uh, lost some money there and then since 2015 they've all been gaining uh wealth so you can kind of see uh that's kind of going to be opposite of this one um, but certainly there's a lot of more details to look at um, here in this chart. Um, I kind of just wanted to focus on the economy of Japan and the largest companies in Japan. And that's pretty much what I want to do. You now, this is very different than the S&P. This is, you know, you could say in general, this is down. This is harsh until 2003. Um, and then a kind of up segment and then another down segment. So they certainly have a different feeling about the stock market in Japan. Um, although... It is one of the world's largest by far economies, right? So it's the third largest. So it kind of puts things into perspective. Um, while things are kind of seem like they never endingly go up in America, um, Japan has had kind of a leveling off here. Um, so, um, <clears throat> um, but uh, you can go back here and see this overall wealth perspective. So there's a lot of other countries in here, um, and every this is the segment of everyone else. So Japan is just huge, huge. And uh, quite honestly, uh, the, perhaps the main reason for that is just the beauty of the islands and the natural environment here. Um, this is pretty flat land for a lot of Chinese uh, live and are familiar with very flat land, uh, but then there's these mountainous areas here. So Japan, actually uh has a lot of uh different kinds of landscapes here um and we're gonna try to look at uh i think what we'll do is look at some of the major cities first um and then kind of dive into all the companies um but you can see uh tokyo here and then the japanese name for tokyo put that in there um and 
basically the north side of the island, south side. I'll, I'll drop the climate in here so you can kind of see what's going on with the climate. Um, and uh, I was interested uh, originally in Tokyo, and then I started reading some travel guides for Japan. And I realized a lot of the people that wrote the travel guides, uh, they're from Osaka and the south, uh, south part of Japan. Um, and I think early in the history, uh, the uh, capital has kind of changed a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, nice little islands here. So there's like this whole island here and almost a whole island here and some other islands off in here with the main island being this one. Uh, and you can kind of see uh, there's Osaka popping in. So we want to look essentially at everything here in Japan um, and kind of get a uh, and get a, a breath here in a second. But you can kind of see uh, overall. So Tokyo uh, being one of the largest and by far one of the largest cities in the world, that kind of gives you the perspective. But certainly there's a lot of other areas. Um, it might be worth uh, looking at just typing in on a video search engine to say, hey, landing in Osaka or landing in Tokyo. And that kind of gives you an a airplane view perspective of landing in one of these cities. I learned a lot in Shanghai. It kind of scared me. And then I ran to Japan and was like, oh, this looks way more interesting landing here in Osaka. But um, certainly uh, fishing and sailing culture, you could see there'd just be a lot of little nice little areas. This is not the same as all over the world. So like in, back in here, this pretty flat coastline. Uh, makes it difficult for boating and sailing, but also heavy, you know, this is a, a major rift off into the ocean where you get, um, you know, uh, tsunamis and tidal waves and, and dangerous uh, things because of uh, earthquakes. So that's another problem you have to worry about, although a very beautiful landscape, um, quite problems with uh, natural, natural disasters like that, um, but maybe even further different than, say, uh, down in the Philippines where you might have a lot of weird volcano volcanic activity, but I'm sure there's a lot of volcanoes in here, too. So but uh, just so much to look at here um, I'll add a quick little night view. So this is the light at night um, So you kind of see and this adds the population into it. So here you can kind of see now this part um, I would like to study this but I'm just so interested in, in Osaka, and I'm probably going to have to go through and look at this island really carefully because it's certainly the polar opposite of uh, the north side of Japan here. But uh, but you can basically kind of see uh, the population mixture here with this almost uh, gigantic city right here and another one here. So And it's just the uh, footprint is pretty big, and, and you can't forget about that northern island there. Certainly, this would be a whole different, interesting culture here, and comparing that kind of with the southernmost island, um, and just a huge amount of land area, even in this one space. You can see this is all South Korea, and geez, so you know, I mean, Japan has to kind of compare. When you compare this fairly, Japan has actually got quite a lot of land. Um, doesn't really look like it too much from this, but I mean, this is the main part of uh, China. You know, seven. 100 million people, a billion people living out in there. So and this is Japan. So, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, so if you do a quick web search for a uh, list of largest Japanese companies, Wikipedia, <clears throat> you'll come up with this. Um, and there's basically the fortune list. Um, and they have it organized nicely. And then the Forbes list. And the fortune list uh, includes like a little bit, I think it says, just by annual revenue and the other one the Forbes list is publicly traded so some of those some of these may not be publicly traded so you can't trade them I have tried to trade a few uh, Japanese companies um, but uh, so they organize this in terms of revenue primarily but I really like to do it in terms of profit and then just also look at employees so in terms of profit uh, Toyota is the most profitable but interestingly uh, the bank SoftBank is number two um, and they're making a lot of interesting investments um, I believe I'm not I shouldn't say which ones they're making I'm not sure exactly but there's a couple in America I think that they have um, that are interesting um, and then total employees so we can sort this by employees so and Toyota has the most employees but <clears throat> telecommunications <clears throat> is kind of big here so uh, the other thing is looking at the headquarters so 
I kind of wanted to just focus on these headquarters um, ideas to kind of see, so you can see um, Tokyo and then a couple others, Osaka here um, and um, whatnot. <clears throat> Uh, so from this list, I just want to look at where the headquarters are. So here's Toyota Motor Corporation, and just a look from Yahoo. So just uh, grabbing a couple of these and then looking at their financials. So if you click on profile, uh, sometimes you can get the address. So I just want to grab the address here um, and then switch this over here to this guy and drop in the address and see if we can find <coughs> uh, Toyota's headquarters. I couldn't understand this. That's great. Uh, so for some reason, the address didn't quite work out, so I had to do another search here uh, and just showed up with this address kind of on the edge of Tokyo. Interestingly, so let's... So I typed in that address, and it shows up right here. So we're just going to uh, zoom in on this guy. So basically, this is Toyota headquarters. Um, and uh, interestingly, kind of on the edge... Of Japan here um, excuse me uh, Tokyo and um, just interestingly so here you kind of see the bay I've already done a little bit of work on a uh, Tokyo here but you can see uh, there's kind of this uh, uh, whole area of Tokyo with these couple of streams and kind of a kind of a far northern side of Tokyo here right so uh, you know, certainly, um, I'm going to add, there's something I really like to add is the Wikipedia entries. And that just helps me see what else is going on. Um, there's some weird effects here, but kind of see Tokyo here and uh, where Toyota is their headquarters. And uh, uh, kind of far, I would say, from a lot of the other parts of Tokyo. Um and uh, just interestingly kind of loading up the map here it's taken a little while but kind of a, a kind of a suburb uh, almost on the edge here and uh, yeah just interesting spot for uh, Toyota uh, so it was worth just to kind of zoom in a little bit more here um, I'm gonna make some big assumptions here but so basically, this is kind of the downtown area. I think even the city might even be called called Achi, Toyota Achi. So it says, um, yeah, so there's kind of these uh, factory buildings out here. And because Toyota is so big in Japan, it's highly likely that some of these are part of their factories. Um, but it's kind of nice to see some really interesting farmland pretty close in here. Um, might have a nice feel just having a little farmland kind of by your city but it's just you know there's a lot of buildings trying to load up here and you can kind of see what this might be like a little river and I'm already starting to feel like I'm in Japan <laughs> or Japanese uh, but uh, uh, but yeah so here's the uh, uh, some kind of station probably a train station of some sort and then Toyota's building here, um, and you can kind of see all these other little spots in their city. Um, and I think I kind of like this back perspective for some reason, just looking out into the rest of Tokyo. So we're kind of that this area about in here would be the rest of Tokyo, and kind of a kind of a you know medium sized, pretty big city here, but you know small enough to walk across pretty easily part of uh and then they got it's kind of nice to see these little parks here and stuff um but uh just interesting to see uh where toyota is relative to the rest of this and we'll just zoom way out I'll flip this back around and hopefully you're not too confused um but uh, it does take some time to oh whoa so i'm not even in Tokyo holy grease oh my gosh so I really made a mistake that was wow I was so confused <laughs> all right yeah so Tokyo actually up here anyway um yeah so this is like a whole nother city um all right so 
I'm just going to leave this in. Unfortunately, I was talking about this whole Tokyo. I was like, yeah, it doesn't really look great, but I guess it's Tokyo, but it's not. So you're going to have to learn a hard lesson here that you got to do your own homework. Um, but uh, basically, here we are on Tokyo, which sounds a lot like Toyota. But uh, anyway, uh, but basically, here you are. So actually, I wanted to really look at Osaka and all that anyway, so that's kind of good. Uh, a little bit closer to Osaka. So interestingly enough, Toyota is not, looks like it's perhaps not located their headquarters in Tokyo, but they perhaps are so big that they have spots there too. So don't just take my word for it. Uh, so next on this lift is SoftBank, and I'm not that familiar with them at all. Um, I've never even seen their headquarters or anything. So we're going to look them up real quick. Okay, so here is SoftBank's. I can kind of see their charts, PE ratio, earnings per share. Looks like they're doing pretty good and actually quite high, um, relatively speaking to their whole history. Um, but under the profile, we can hopefully get the address here. Um, and they look to be like they're located in Tokyo. And hopefully, I can grab this address and find them in Tokyo so we can get a look at where Japan's biggest bank is located and aha having trouble finding it and it's zooming in and found it so here we are at SoftBank so a oh, few this makes a lot more sense to me now so uh, yeah so I'm taking off all those Wikipedia ones so here's SoftBank kind of see the vastness of Tokyo um, certainly um, some uh, deep suburban areas back in there. Uh, so Tokyo can be a pretty hard city to understand here. Um, and uh, I know it's just a similarity between here and uh, Shanghai. So basically uh, there's kind of this like peninsula that heads out here and then all this like flat, basically ports, right? And it just makes for kind of an ugly waterfront, um, unfortunately, because it's very square. And you can see that the bank is kind of tucked back in here. It's still loading up just tons of buildings, but you can kind of see there's the soft bank. And it's just, you know, it's not really even parks. It's kind of some factories and some other things and just a not a normal waterfront by any means. Um, almost like a checkerboard waterfront in this part. So, but soft banking you can kind of see here and just uh, heading out into the Tokyo Bay, which might even have a different name than that, but you can kind of see it's just not your typical nice waterfront. And even the airport here was built kind of on the water. Um, so, uh, but basically what that means is it's similar to Shanghai has a weird problem because there's a lot of there's the uh, Yenzin River that kind of dumps out by Shanghai and then just south of Shanghai is kind of another peninsula area and here you have kind of a similar thing um, you have these rivers kind of dumping out and then this peninsula here with this little mountain range here so kind of looking back into Tokyo this time for real you can kind of see a whole separate kind of a beachfront Tokyo out there um, and uh, maybe uh, out in here might be super interesting and nice as well so but to get people to work for you you have to be close to downtown Tokyo so it's interesting here because the the downtown is technically said out in this way there's a couple like famous parks and stuff near their downtown. Um, but basically you can see SoftBank there in the horizon. Uh, so next I want to look at Sony. Um, and on their list here, it's uh, basically number, by profits, uh, they're number four. So uh, they have a ticker symbol here, SNE. Um, you can see they've kind of had a high back in around 2000 and then dropped very suddenly and kind of approaching another high here. So that's over since 1970s. So this is quite a long chart for Sony to look at. And you can see these two big bumps. 
certainly a lot more turbulence recent recent years. Um, but here, let's hope that this address looks like it's also in Tokyo. And we just looked at SoftBank, so we're gonna switch back here, and I'll type in this address, and hopefully we can get Sony's address. Still searching. Ah, oh, found something. So a little bit different location. Uh, SoftBank was kind of, so this is out near the airport a little bit. Uh, and uh, Sony's been around a lot longer, I think. I don't know the details on SoftBank, but I haven't heard much about them. I've heard Sony for a while, but kind of see Sony back in here. Um, we might even be able to do a street view. Probably, actually, it'd probably be better to do a street view back in here over by SoftBank. Um, but what I'm going to do is hopefully get a street view right on this road. Looks like we would get a good view here. So let's just see. Might not be able to see Sony directly, but we can, uh, well, maybe we can get closer in here. Let's see if we can do, I don't know, I want to do the park. That's where I'd go if I was in here. See if we can look here. Aha. So, you might walk over here, get lunch if you worked at Sony. Um, probably Sony's back in the background here somewhere. But nice little park and, uh, I don't know, you know, apartment complex. Not too interesting, but big apartment complex. All brand new trees, very young trees. And this is a 2020 image that we're looking at here. But uh, anyway, so that was this little park here right outside of Sony's headquarters. And uh, maybe this little bridge, I can just see if I can get, drop us in on this bridge. That might be fun. Ah, no bridge. That's too bad. All right, let's do the waterway. Boat. Let's see if we can get a view from the water. And a view from the water here, and you can probably see that bridge. Ah, it doesn't look as interesting from the water, but, uh, you know, quite a number of buildings here. This is kind of the Sony area. It might uh, special events and take a little boat ride in uh, Tokyo. But uh, anyway, so that was uh, Sony, and then <clears throat> kind of comparing that to SoftBank. So they're the number four here in Japan. And just zoom out again to kind of see where they are in Tokyo. Now I kind of feel bad about this. Um, I'm going to look at Toshiba here. I'm kind of just running down the list one by one and kind of a little boring to do that way. But but they are the largest ones in Japan. So another one is Toshiba. Toshiba and um, they are traded as an... OTC market company, so it's a little bit harder to trade them. But I got their address here, hopefully. Ooh, that was included their phone number. So let's grab just the address. Um, and there we go. And they're also in Tokyo. So this is Toshiba. And uh, taking a little bit to find them. Did you find them? Maybe not. Oh, there they are. So, uh, there they are kind of zoomed in so Toshiba and they're in the top five basically top ten and you can see they're kind of back towards this this spot too maybe a little bit better a view of the waterfront uh, than SoftBank but SoftBank is maybe closer to the uh, park there so just a little bit of a trade-off and just there's some uh, rails here for the uh, train system I believe um, which is interesting to study, um, but uh, the, the train system in Tokyo is fast. But you can see Toshiba Corporation there, and, and it's not little. I hate to zoom out like this because it's not loading all the buildings, but you can kind of start to see some of the buildings anyway. And Toshiba there. Uh, so next, I'm just going to skip down here to uh, this company. Um, which is a trading company down in Osaka because I'm really interested in Osaka. So uh, let's take a look at them. Uh, so here they are um, loaded up with their ticker. Uh, it's another um, kind of indirect American exchange traded. But uh, again, they show in Tokyo here. 
um, which is interesting. Uh, but uh, so maybe we won't really look at them. But uh, the uh, other chart says uh, Osaka for headquarters. But uh, you can see Nissan here in a mm -hmm. different location. Another automotive company and a construction mm -hmm. company down here in Osaka as well. So we'll just conclude it here. Um, and uh, but I'll basically zoom on out mm -hmm. here for uh, Tokyo and we can look at everything else. But yeah, so I'm really sorry that was kind of a Tokyo thing for everything here, but there's a lot to Japan and uh, certainly maybe what I should do next time is try to do uh, just uh, kind of check all of southern Japan, um, just the companies there. I'm not sure how to get a list for just southern Japan. I uh, might have to learn some Japanese and search on the Japanese engine um, and then even kind of check on this north side. But certainly Tokyo was shown as a number of companies here all in Tokyo. So that might make it a little bit hard for Japan in general. Uh, might be even a possibility to become a business person and just move businesses here out of Tokyo into other parts of Japan. Um, but uh, uh, but yeah, so just an overview. Uh, hope it hopefully it explained a lot about this whole region. And uh, if you have some ideas, uh, let me know. Uh, I'd be glad to chat.